Hello again, everybody. We're continuing our Revelations review here, and we're moving on to our Warpath cards. And as a reminder, I am rating these in terms of how spicy they are, which is how excited I am to put them into a deck. Uh, it doesn't necessarily correlate with how powerful the card is, and it's subjective, so your spice rating might be very different than how mine looks. And we're going to start with the commons and move up towards... Uh, we have rare as the highest rarity for Warpath cards this set. The first card we're going to look at is Remember the Giants. And Remember the Giants, for me, is a two spice. It is uh, a card that I think is fair to say, if we're going to use the food metaphor here with how spicy it is, this card is more of like the, the potatoes of the set. It's like, it might be good for you. It might be something that you include in the deck, but it's not bringing um, a whole lot of flashiness. Uh, so anyways, this card is what it is. I'm just not super excited about it, but... Uh, I would play it. I would play it in draft, especially like in draft. Man, this is fantastic, but just not too spicy. Next, Sabretooth Snail. This is a five spice for me. Uh, I want to put this in a deck and see where it goes. It's one of the most aggressively costed creatures we've, or characters we've ever seen. And uh, I'm curious to see how it plays and what kind of decks we can use to take advantage of it. So, five spice all the way. Next, we have Seek the Prophet. And Seek the Prophet is also a five spice for me. This card we haven't got to talk about yet, so let's talk about it a little. It's, it's very interesting. So, first of all, it's one cost and it draws you a card, which, generally speaking, tends to be pretty foolproof. Uh, can't go wrong with that. But it draws you a beast card specifically. So if you curate your deck to have a very narrow number of beasts, so this is one more path purity. Um, so you could potentially rely on other factions for most of your characters and then include just like one beast card or uh, one, one set of three beast cards. And this will automatically find it. So it's it's programmable to find the card that you want and then it also lets you double dip on this card it gives it plus two plus two which is a nice perk and when it dies it shuffles back into your deck and permanently gains plus two plus two so we're looking at across the course of the game if the game goes long enough this is drawing you a card giving the beast plus two plus two and then giving it an additional plus two plus two and giving you the possibility of drawing it again. I don't know exactly where this card's place is, but I really want to find out. I really want to brew some decks with it, and uh, I'm curious to see what other people are going to be using this card for, but I think it's a pretty exciting one, especially for a common. Okay, and next we're moving on to our uncommons. This is Carrie's New Life, and Carrie's New Life is a one-cost character for Warpath. Uh, that alone is kind of significant because uh, we've really been relying on Hulking Sniper as our one-cost Warpath beast for a very, very long time. And Hulking Sniper is fantastic, but this gives you the option to play something else or play both. And uh, it has the ability, you can sacrifice it, and if it was on the battlefield, you gain one extra resource next turn. Seems interesting. Uh, I think just because it is a one path or a one cost warpath card, that really gives it a, a three spice in my book just for being a one path, a uh, one cost <laughs> warpath card. Um, but it might really deserve a four spice if somebody can find a really interesting way to abuse that one extra resource. I can't think of an obvious use. Uh, it just seems like a nifty perk to me. So for me, I'm going to just leave it at three spice. Okay. Next we have Kale's Restoration. And that's put the top seven cards of your deck into your graveyard, then put the most expensive character in your graveyard into your hand. 
This card's interesting. So it gives you the ability to see a lot of cards in the sense that it puts more of them in your graveyard. And if you are pairing up with sleepers or other cards that uh, do things while they're in your graveyard, this could be pretty nice. Um, but you don't have a lot of control over which character comes back to your hand. So that's something you might have to think about when you're building your deck. And um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure really what I would do with this. So I'm not. I'm not excited to do something with this yet. I'm more excited to see what other people do with it. So I think we're gonna give it. Um, I think it's. I think it's a, a two spice for me. And our final card, a rare, and this is one we have talked about before, Koro Finder of Ways. But this is a five spice for me. Uh, I think that the ability to buff all the characters in your deck hand the graveyard permanently is really, really cool. The ability to do that from the command zone without having to pay the larger cost that's associated with Koro is very cool. And it's one purity in Warpath. So we have the option to really mix and match this card with a lot of factions and see how they handle with that that aoe buff that hits your whole deck and that wraps up warpath and uh i'll see you all in the next one